Hey guys, Maka here, bringing you a very quick first impressions video of Oli Oli, which has now been available on the PC and PlayStation forever, but recently came to the Xbox One, which is why I'm taking a look. I've been playing the game for a few hours and thought I would share my opinions, as a lot of people have been asking me if it's worth picking up. It does come in at $10, it's 20% off for the first week of launch, so it's about $8 for those who are interested in purchasing it right now. For those that might not be familiar, Oli Oli is a side-scrolling skateboarding game that is heavily reliant on timing, and you'll see some gameplay running in the background as I'm talking. Now, as you can see on screen, graphically, the game is pretty simplistic, albeit very colorful. Uh, it does a good job at representing the background versus the foreground so you know what is in your plane and what isn't. It also does a good job at distinguishing between grindable rails and uh, stairs and obstacles that will actually make you fall. So the graphics to me are actually fine and the music selection in my opinion is actually one of the best parts of this game although it probably won't be very fitting for everyone. It is very electronic music inspired and has a lot of kind of drum and bass and glitch subgenres in there. I really liked it and there's also uh, some a career mode that lasts about 25 tracks. Once you do all of the amateur stuff you can go into a pro circuit, there's 25 of those tracks. And then once you complete all of those there's a rad mode which I think adds another 25 tracks. Um, but those are all going to be really really hard for most of the people. But there is a good variety in there. There's also a daily grind mode which uh, I think it has a 24 hour counter every day that resets and you can work on a daily kind of challenge. The career itself isn't that great necessarily, there is a little bit of repetition and although all of the actual individual places you'll visit, there's to to 5 total locales, they all visually look different, they actually don't play that differently at all, which I guess is good and bad, but they all feel very very similar in a kind of negative way. And then one of the main problems I had when starting this game was the controls. The controls are not like anything you've ever really experienced before in a skateboarding game and they are quite frustrating especially when you're starting. You can literally want to pull your hair out in a really bad way. One of the reasons for that is because it's a very timing intensive game but the controls don't necessarily feel as intuitive as I would have liked them to feel. Uh, you actually do all your tricks with the left stick, you also jump with the left stick, but you land with the A button. You also grind with the left stick, so you do almost everything with your left stick, but then you grind with, uh, rather you land your tricks with the A button, and then you use the bumpers to rotate your character. It does feel a little bit unnatural, and when you're trying to get into the rhythm and timing of something, you don't want the controls to be the problem uh, of why you're actually failing something. It's one of the biggest frustrations ever, in my opinion, in gaming. When you know what you want to do, your timing is perfect, and the reason you were not able to do what you were trying to do was because of the controls. That did happen to me quite a few times in the first two to three hours. Uh, after about four hours, though, things started clicking a little better. I got a lot better at the game. I started enjoying it a lot more, which brings me to gameplay. Gameplay-wise, this game is actually really, really fun once you learn those frustrating controls. You'll be jumping from rail to rail, you'll be getting high scores, doing mad tricks, yo, and you'll be spinning and grinding, and there's a whole bunch of tricks, and there's over 100 tricks. Um, it's actually like 25 tricks, but then each trick has like four variants, depending on your stance and your rotation and stuff. Um, so there's actually a decent amount of tricks and variety in there, and uh, once you actually get into that groove of figuring out those controls, the game is very rewarding and has a good risk and reward type of uh, factor. Um, also, just like in a lot of games that are like base like this, you can instant restart any level by clicking like two buttons really quick and it'll instantly spawn you at the very beginning of the level so that you can work on uh, a high, new high score, a new combo, or any of the five challenges that they have listed per level that let you unlock further levels. So that's mostly all I have to say. This is a very rewarding and fun game if you can get over the control scheme, which is initially extremely frustrating. I've been enjoying myself and I've played for about four or five hours now and uh, will continue to play for a bit actually. I, I actually really enjoyed my time with it. And for that, I would recommend it if you are a side-scrolling, a timing kind of gamer. Um, there's, it's kind of like a small subgenre of a subgenre, but um, if you enjoy skateboarding games and you enjoy games that are very based on timing and reaction and uh, stringing together large combos, you'll really like this game and hopefully uh, you can either check it out or watch the video and make your make up your own mind. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.